Hi everyone! In this video we're going to look at Maybelline's Gigi Hadid collection exclusively through Ulta and in collaboration with Maybelline. So this is available online at Ulta and I will put a link in the description box to where you can find it if you're interested in purchasing any of these items. As always please check the description box below for links to where I will do photographs and swatches on the lips of the lip products as well as reviews for all the other products that I show you in this video and to see the link to the blog sale. If you haven't already subscribed and entered the giveaway for the My Little Pony eyeshadow palette from Colourpop, please make sure to go over to that video and make sure that you are entered to win. All right, without further ado, let's look at Maybelline's collaboration collection with Gigi Hadid. So since it's the centerpiece of this collection, let's start with the Jet Setter palette and this retails for $29.99. The palette is made of heavy duty cardboard and opens up like this. It does have a good sized mirror in the lid portion. So on the very left side here, we start with four cream products, a concealer, a contour, and two lip balms. Next to that, we have two mini sized brushes. In the middle here, we have four eyeshadows. And then on the right side of the palette, you have your blush, contour, or bronzer. It is supposed to be matte, the highlighter, and a um, mini sized volume express. All right, so I'll probably swatch these cream products together, the eyeshadows, of course, together. And then depending on what the pigmentation is like, I will either swatch multiple layers of these or just the three products side by side. All right, so starting with the concealer and followed by the contour. These are very light, limited range of skin tones that the, these would work for. That contour could definitely work for uh, someone of deeper skin tone as a concealer. And these are the two lip balms. You can see they're pretty sheer there. I'm gonna build up the lip balms just a little bit and they do have a very balmy, slightly waxy texture to them. All right, so there are the cream products or balm products on the left side. Here are the brushes. Um, I am not impressed at all by the quality of these. They are very, very rough, made with plastic feeling bristles. Um, the same for the duo ended, I think, eyeshadow brush there. All right, moving on to the eyeshadows, we start with a shimmering champagne -y cream, a rosy or dusty rose with more of a satin finish, a an almost matte medium neutral brown, and a matte black. All right, and those are the four eyeshadow shades up close. That black one you can see is a little more sheer, although that might actually be nice for trying to blend something out more easily. And now I'm gonna move to the face powders. It's really difficult to get a brush in that really narrow strip of blush there. Um, so actually having a pretty skinny brush like this is really helpful especially if you don't want to use the small brush that comes in the palette. All right, I'm gonna build that up with two layers here. This powder has a nice color to it and has a seemingly pretty blendable formula. And moving on to the bronzing color. Again, Really good pigmentation, seems to go on pretty smoothly. Gonna add just a little more product. I don't think it really needs it. But again, it's hard to get your brush just into that one pan because it's narrow. And lastly, the highlighting shade, which strangely has the biggest pan. It's fairly easy to keep your brush in. That highlight is very nice, lovely on the skin. All right, so there are your three face powders swatched with a powder brush. And then of course the Colossal Mascara has the same kind of brush as you would get with a full-sized mascara. All right, so overall I do not like this palette. I definitely do not think it is worth $30. You can get 
much better palettes from other affordable brands for that same price. Um, I don't think that the concealer and highlighter are any sort of formula to rave about, neither are the lip balms. I also don't really like having them in this form factor in this palette. Um, the eyeshadows are a little too soft and crumbly for my personal taste, but I think a lot of people will be able to work with them pretty easily. From having used the Colossal Full Size before, I do really like that mascara. I think it's one of Maybelline's uh, better ones, or if not one of the top ones that they have. And then the face powders, I just, I don't understand the decision to make this really thin strip of blush, um, a relatively thin strip of bronzer, and then a huge strip of highlighter. If anything, you use the least amount of highlight compared to blush and bronzer on your face or contour on your face. So I do think the highlighter is beautiful, but I don't think that the quality of any of the powders in this palette warrants the amount of money it costs, and I definitely think that the way the palette is laid out makes very little sense. Next up is the Gigi Hadid West Coast Glow Eyeshadow Palette. There are actually two palettes, and I'm not sure why I only have one to show you, but um, this is the West Coast one. It retails for $14.99. This is the warm palette, and the other one would have been the cool palette. These are the shades that you have up close. I'll probably go from top clockwise this way, and then top, um, I guess counterclockwise this way, and then top clockwise on the other side. I'm surprised to see that these actually do have names on the back, so I'll go by names. All right, this first shade is called Blonde. It's a frosty, very pale champagne gold. Shade two is a matte, very soft, um, beigey pinky nude. Third is a rose gold. It's kind of like a peachy rose gold with a shimmering finish. Next is another nude, matte nude shade, but this is more of a peach toned nude. And then we have a rich coppery gold, frosty finish. And the last is a deep neutral brown with a matte finish. Surprised how patchy this is. I'm gonna layer just a little more product on here. Okay, so there you have the West Coast Warm Palette. Um, these have a very similar formula and texture and quality to the City Mini Palettes that Maybelline has a lot of, and I'm really surprised by that brown shade because it seemed to be pretty creamy and soft in the pan, but um, went on pretty patchy there. The rest of them go on very smoothly. Then we also have these two eyeshadow palettes. These are the Eye Contour palettes, and they retail also for $14.99 each. And this time I do have both to show you the warm and the cool palette. So these are the shades in the warm palette, which I'll swatch left to right, and the shades in the cool palette. As always, I swatch these with an eyeshadow brush over eyeshadow primer. Then we have the West Coast Glow Liquid Strobes, and these come in two different shades. We have the gold shade and then the iridescent shade. And each of these retails for $11.99. Oh, and I guess I misspoke. The gold shade is West Coast Glam Liquid Strobe. And then the iridescent shade is the East Coast Liquid Strobe. All right, so we're gonna start with the gold shade. I'm going to just squeeze up a little bit of product and then blend it out. And then the iridescent shade. So the gold is pretty strong in pigmentation and it's more of a copper. Very bronzy. Definitely very summery. Then the iridescent shade is, do I dare say, very holographic. It has flashes of a bunch of colors, predominantly pink under this lighting. All right, there are those two shades up close. It's interesting, they have very different formulas. This gold shade blends really smoothly and easily, has high pigmentation. The iridescent shade, I was surprised at how patchy it blends. Um, 
and it doesn't have that strong sheen the way the gold shade does there. So I will definitely test these on the face. A lot of times the consistency or quality changes once you're applying it to the face where there's more oils and foundation and things like that, but for now that's what it looks like. Before I swatch the eye contour palettes, I want to show you the brushes, which also retail for $14.99 each, because I'm going to use the flat one to swatch the eyeshadows in the contour palettes. So it's interesting because this flat and pointed one is actually called the contour brush, the eye contour brush, and then this more fluffy and angled brush is called the um, glow eyeshadow brush or west coast glow eyeshadow brush. This is the east coast and this is the west coast. Um, and I would probably use this one more for blending into the crease because it's more fluffy and for the purposes of these swatches I'm going to use the flat and more pointed brush. In terms of the packaging, I guess you could say um, it does seem pretty high quality. The bristles are fairly soft and you can tell that they're definitely synthetic. These also actually have names on the back, so I will go by those names. So the first shade is Dreamer Cool. This is a matte cream. Louis Cool is a matte or looks almost satin finish, light tan. Bond Saint Cool is a satin finished grayish lavender. Nolita Cool is a smoky silvered gray. And Bowery Cool is a matte black. All right, there you have the shades with the eyeshadow brush from the collection in the Cool palette. All right, so here's Dreamer Warm, which again is a matte cream. Ironically, this is a little less yellow toned than the one in the Cool palette, and actually this does have kind of a sheen to it. Next is a very light camel brown, a deeper, very yellow based tan, a light to medium peach color, and then a matte chocolate brown. Again, this patchy formula here. All of these have kind of a sheen, satiny finish. All right, and here are the shades from the warm palette up close. All right, so then there are six total lipsticks in the collection. They're divided up into two color families with three shades in each of those families, and they retail for 90 and they retail for $8.99 each. So for the more neutral colors, those are the East Coast Glam Matte Lipsticks. And on the right side with the brighter colors, those are the three West Coast Glow Matte Lipsticks. So here's the shade McCall, Tara, Erin, Austin, Kahir, probably not pronouncing that right, but that's what it looks like, and Lonnie. And next to those lipstick swatches, I will also swatch the two East Coast Glam Lip Liner and the West Coast Glam Lip Liner. These retail for $7.99 each. This is the shade Tara, which of course you can pair with the corresponding lipstick, and Austin, which you can also go with the corresponding lipstick. All right, so here is McCall. This is a soft, um, tanny pink nude. Tara is another nude, but this one is more um, nudey or beigey. It's a little less pink, a little more brown. And Erin is a deeper uh, berry, mauvey berry. And then Austin is a bold reddish orange color. Kair, I don't know how you pronounce it, it's K H A I R. This is um, a red, it's an orange toned red, and Lonnie is a red, but this is a blue toned red. This is a very perfect example of what blue toned reds look like and what um, warm toned or orange toned reds look like. Okay, and then next to them, I'll swatch the lip liners.
So again, that's Austin on top and Tara on the bottom. All right, there are your lip colors up close. These all apply really, really smoothly and they're just like buttery soft on the skin, even the lip liners. So if you wanna see pictures of how these apply to the lips, make sure you go to the link in the description box to the website review. All right, so unfortunately, I think this is a pretty disappointing collection. Uh, I think it is very overpriced for the quality of what you get. I think you are definitely paying for the special packaging and the name on the collection instead of the quality of the items. The thing I was most impressed with were the lip products. Those lipsticks are some of the creamiest and just most gliding, easily gliding lipsticks that I've ever that I can recall ever um, swatching from a drugstore brand and the lip liners were very nice too. They didn't tug at all on the skin. The eyeshadow palettes um, and that big palette I think are absolutely not worth the money, um, especially that big palette. I think it's lacking on multiple fronts. The brushes are too expensive for their quality also and the illuminators, the gold one I think is very good quality but the huge bump in the price compared to the illuminating liquids that are already in Maybelline's line I don't think is worth it. You can get really high quality um, liquid illuminators from the regular Maybelline line instead of buying the much more expensive ones from this collection. So let me know in the comment section below if you've tried any of these items out and if you have any other thoughts than what I've contributed here in this video. I hope that this was helpful to you and thank you as always for taking the time to watch. I'll see you in the next one.